Hey guys and welcome to this new episode of Time Counters. An episode inside the watch shack. Why can't I get it? Ah, here we are inside the watch shack, that is, the Pasquale de Menici jewelry store in Via Reggio, which is the official launch of the channel and run by our friend Giacomo. Oh, today we also have good old Piero who is trying to hide because he took an acting course, so his diction will be perfect today. It's true. Did you prepare? Absolutely. I haven't even read them. He hasn't even read them and he will never read them because he's groping. What are the questions, basically, the ones you asked on Instagram? I opened a story that lasted, I opened it at 9 o'clock in the morning, I closed it at 1 o'clock because there were already too many questions. So who hasn't seen it, hasn't seen it, who has seen it, he has seen it, Asta has seen it, Ole. The Uego. Lego so we can start with the first question asked by you friends. Let's see what Piero comes up with. Dino, hello friends, Dino the Credino. What is the best-selling brand of 2024? Thank you very much. Dino the Credino, like Giacomo, will tell us why, I don't know. So, let's say that 2024 was a rather unusual year of ups and downs, so obviously sales alternated. In the second half of the year, which was the best year, the brand that stood out the most was Tissot. It's also true that it should be analyzed by price range, and Tissot is an entry-level price range, let's say, in the Swiss world, if we want to say in the Swatch Group world, so, well, in a time of crisis, let's say, slightly lower prices fare better. It is also true, and analysis is needed, that Tissot is the brand that has undergone the fewest price increases, in fact, as I perceived, in the latest collections it has made truly exceptional products with a very high level of quality, EH, without touching the prices and this obviously plays a bit of a role in help sales. Let's take the case of the PR16, the Skin Diver which is a truly exceptional watch, under 800 euros. EH, how do they do it? I don't know, I'll give you another piece of information, there are no returns on the Tissot brand, the famous power modage that has been discriminated against at times even in some YouTube episodes not by Davide, and yet it has no returns, so in the end it is a truly exceptional product. Davide focuses on B Blue Second Franchise 1924 B Second Frannies. Okay. Technical characteristics and availability and even if it is premature I imagine after sales assistance. So, I understand that there is this demand because it is particular. So let's focus on it. Okay, let's focus. What's special about this watch? What's special about it is that it has a floating seconds hand, which is basically designed, inserted, set, place it however you like, on a transparent disc. So it rotates and looks like it's floating, you know? And then there are the hours and minutes hands that are hinged on the shaft in the center of the dial. It's a designer watch, but also a watch with content. Why content? Aside from the fact that it's a limited edition of 888 pieces, because it houses a caliber made in France, namely a France and Bush caliber. Now, France and Bush was a company that made calibers in the 60s. Then it changed hands several times, it also passed into the hands of Psycho, then it passed into the hands of Tio Time in the early 2000s, which failed to enhance its value, so in the end it became part of the Festina Group, okay. Part of the Festina Group is based in France. Pestina already has Soprod in his group which makes the calibers, so he used France and Bush to make parts for Sopro's calibers. And now if you look at this caliber here, it's none other than, in my opinion, this is my opinion, but it's fairly true because the architecture is practically identical to the Soprod P092, the Soprod Newton. 
In my opinion, this is the French version made in France of the SP092, you can see the architecture with the two balance bridges, then the arrangement changes, the shape of the bridges changes more than anything, but in reality the general architecture, the key points are the same, in my opinion, since they are part of the same company, so let's say it's very plausible that it's a Soprologue that in itself focuses on design, as mentioned, to have something special, right? Bracelet with its beautiful quick release and dedicated ends. Of original design, in short, in my opinion it's worth it. As for the technical assistance request, what I know, Giacomo will tell us later if he has had, I don't think he has had any feedback, but I know that they always have technical assistance in the chair there, in France. Yes, to date, at any rate, they are the only Italian dealership, they obviously have no interest at the moment in opening a national assistance, because it would cost too much. To open a national assistance you need a certain number of dealers. So, if there were to be a problem, the ones we have sold so far have not found any defects, it will be sent back to the French headquarters through us where they will obviously carry out the necessary checks, the necessary interventions, but here we are acting as a bridge, there are absolutely no problems. By the way, I wanted to say that the mechanics are also very nice from an aesthetic point of view, they are very well finished and unlike many other French manufacturers which in practice were rather poor in terms of touch and appearance. This is a truly top-notch product, you can tell. Roberto, I wanted to ask you if you plan to add some sort of financing for purchases in the future. Thank you. So, yes, we are working on it. The truth is that we have also removed the ones we had up until now. There is only one PayPal left, which offers a solution in three installments up to a maximum of 2,000 euros. Um, the old systems that we removed basically required us to pay 6% of commission as a fee to the banking system. Uh, with the prices that we charge our followers, it would have been prohibitive to give you the option of making an installment or we would have asked you to top it up, but obviously it would have been penalizing for you, or we would have to find other systems. We are working on it, we will see what we find soon. Marcelo from Novara, hello everyone. Is it possible to see some diversifiers like Armand Nicolette JS9? I find them very personal, but they are never talked about and go unnoticed. In my opinion, they deserve more visibility. It deserves more visibility. So, we have the JS9. It should be in that tray over there. That one. Yes, specifically this is also a GMT. And the question was a bit more complex, because you also put an EB and a Tutima, an M2 for comparison. At the moment we do not have the Tutima M2 and Eber, unfortunately, we are going through a difficult time regarding this brand, not for the product itself, but for the commercial side. So, you should know that it was managed in Italy by an importer. This importer will discontinue the brand at the end of the year and at the moment we are waiting to understand if some other private importer will manage the Ebel brand in Italy or, or, as has happened with many brands, EB will arrive in Italy, but I do not think so and consequently we are on standby for a moment. We should understand, it may be one of the many brands that will disappear from the Italian market. Too bad, but... Yes, in fact, if you saw in the Black Friday offers we included them, we prepared ourselves in advance in order to reduce the stocks weighing too. Understand what will happen. Ah, we are all left. Okay, nice. This is a diver 300 meters, EH, with a GMT version, with the GMT function, nicely original. It does not have the colors of the bezel that clearly go back to those a bit, seen and reviewed on many brands. Nothing special. But the dial is truly original, these rectangular paired indexes, 
The pencil-shaped hands are really clearly visible and then the caliber will certainly be a Cellite SV330 with the case back closed with the idea of solid. This is a really solid watch. Here, maybe here are the screw pins, lots of stuff. The butterfly clasp may be the one that is a little less flattering to a diver, but it brings with it elegance, as you all know, the small arms, excuse me, the finish of the dial because all the small arms have the particularity of having this workmanship. A bit like satin. Embossed. You say embossed. Say embossed. Embossed. Well done. Piero. Embossed. I thought you were asking him, but Graziano from Rome, hello legendary as always, love to everyone. Why didn't the good Giacomo include the Omega brand in the store, which we enthusiasts and also the boss Davidone like so much? Happy holidays to you, Mascalzoni love. So, we were dealers for many years, then later, due to the company's decision, they left our store. The fashions, the trends, it was to want to chase after the Rolex brand almost before. I believe that if a brand has to be showcased next to another brand that it considers important, it has already placed itself in second, if not third, fourth place, which is a policy that I have never liked and I have asked many times, this is their policy, they have said no. And the market in recent years has been a bit drugged, you know, it has meant that the prices of Omega products have skyrocketed, not only in terms of list price, but also in terms of availability on the market, of course, and even as a company policy some high selling products, for example the Moonwatch, they almost never delivered it to stores anymore, it was hard to find. The crisis helps a little from this point of view because obviously there is a bit more product to be found and they still don't give me the concession, not even the desire. Because having a concession today means buying lots of nice Speedum, lots of nice Seaster, but it also means buying lots of Dabiel, lots of Constellations, which are watches that are a bit more difficult to sell. Well, since there is a possibility of finding goods, starting next week, in about 10 days, I will show you a whole series of products that I have obviously purchased, including many Omega products that you can always buy at a price. Ah. Ah. True, okay. Hey, Alessandro, hi Giacomo. Top 3 brands in terms of communication, supply, pre-sales and after-sales customer service based on the experience of your store. Thank you and Merry Christmas to everyone. So, I'm sorry to always have to talk about the same old things, but if we want to pick 3 top selling brands within my business with the best after-sales service there are brands that are part of the Swatch Group and Tissa Hamilton Longen. There are three different price ranges, but if we want we can put Arado, we can put Mido because in any case the assistance is all the same. It is the only brand in the world that, if you encounter any problem during the warranty period, they send a courier to your home, pick up the watch, perform the necessary work, and send the watch back to your home completely free of charge. No one else does that. I think it is an exceptional service. It significantly reduces the assistance time because obviously we skip the step of sending the watch back to us or having to go to an official dealer. You go directly to the parent company who will solve the problem for you. Logically, no one will solve it the way Casamadre solves it. I have answered you. Mom is always mom. Mom is always mom. Emiliano, hello guys, I could see the long and Zulu on Davide's wrist in both sizes 39 and 42. I was considering it as a graduation gift. Which one would you choose? Greetings and happy holidays. So, unfortunately, right now I have more 42s than anything else, because I've run out of 30s, I have to restock them. So, ironically, talking about 2024, which has been a bit of a confusing year, the trend has always been towards smaller sizes. 
We started the year with sales unbalanced towards 39s. The end of the year, however, rebalanced everything. We are selling more 42s, which I perceive and analyze as yet another change in trend in watchmaking. The size of watches is also changing. The size above 40 is being revalued, especially on very sporty watches, watches with a bezel. So we'll see where it will take us later, whether it's a change in trend that the parent companies want or whether your taste at home is changing. Well, 42 looks good on the wrist. Hey, I repeat, I also have 42 millimeters watches and I don't see why I shouldn't have them. Well, I mean, if you always want the small stuff, as he said, no. No, he said the big stuff. Oh, come on. Let's say hello to Agostino who got a real gem because he got the limited edition version with the big bezel. Agostino, Agostino, Agostino the truck driver. The Inter fan. What's he from Inter? He's from Inter. Yes, I don't remember. Okay. Federico Cuordivna. Hi guys, you can see him wearing the Hamilton Khaki Evasion Pilot Pioneer Mechanical. Thanks Federico. Hey, where are you? The 36mm one. I've read great reviews about this watch regarding its running time, but many owners on the forums have said that after about two years the case broke. We have opinions on this. No. No, but I don't even know what they were. No, okay. It's the one with the 36mm mineral glass, the one with the cushion case. Ah, that one there, that one there. EH, maybe one. No, I didn't have it, I have it for everything. But anyway, there's the thing about the one that after two years, yes. I've never heard of this thing after two years. The caliber is the same as the one used in the Cockafield, the Expedition, the Tissot, it's always the one that the spring breaks after two years. No, but this is a manual winding. EH, but the base is always the same. So, it's something that has happened less in recent years. At the beginning, the khakis had a problem, especially the manual windings, where there was a spring with a hook, that is, at the bottom, at the end of the spring, there's a small tooth that obviously hooks to stay still, to stay hooked to the mechanism and this little hook here was a bit weak. It often happened that the springs would come loose, the springs in that part would break and had to be replaced. However, I can tell you that this happened about 10 years ago, when they also changed the caliber because the power reserve increased. Consequently, they also had to change the spring, because changing the power reserve means installing a larger spring. Most likely, they also reinforced it and put it in place, obviously because they had to have a greater pressure. They also reinforced it during the attachment phase, so it hasn't happened again, but not in the long term. I have to tell you the truth. I see that we have sold a lot of watches in recent years, we haven't had any returns yet, and I don't know, there is always a case for everything, but obviously you have to take an average between the sales and returns. To date, there are no reports of these things. Davide from Novi Ligur, best regards, legendary trio, I would like to have a comparison between the Mido TV5 and the So PRX35 or another 3536 of your choice. Budget around 1,000 euros. Thank you for everything you do for us enthusiasts. So, I looked for a lot of things. So, I don't have the PRX35. It's the holidays, we're struggling to keep up with all the orders. So the stock runs out and is constantly being restocked. It runs out and is constantly being restocked. The TV, here it is. I racked my brains to see if I could find any other products in that size. I couldn't find anything because they were either bigger or smaller. Here, the only one I found was this one. And now I have it in a pink color, but it actually comes in five different colors, like black, blue, orange, pink, light blue, even more feminine versions like this one, but also mother of pearl. This is a great watch, it's a... Ah, I have to say that it has a pink dial and openwork artifacts with little gears that you can see, it's definitely my favorite watch. Such a beautiful pink, I like it a lot. 
Clearly, I am a fan of the Mido TV, which I recently reviewed, and in my opinion it looks good on a wrist that is even 1 meter long. This one doesn't suit women, it looks more like this. Yeah, let's say, no, if you get it in blue, for example, it's very masculine. So, the real issue, this must be said when we reach sizes of 34 to 35, we are on that border where case comes into play because it becomes a unisex watch that can be adapted to both a man's and a woman's wrist. What makes the difference? The color variations. It is logical that a pink, a pearly one is a little more feminine, a black, a blue is a little more masculine. Also bright, the lights. Yes, small finishes that make the watch a little more like a jewel. I like the pink, the Andesan. Palermo. Black pink, Palermo. E.H. Filippo from Ravenna, with a budget of Euro 2005 to 3000 can I be fascinated by the Jane display case? Look out, look out at the Jane window. You said that Devorto is coming, huh? You did it. Good. Yes, 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 yes. Even start with the Idro Conquest, which is still well below this price range. We are at 2,000 euros for the Destino. Here it is. Yes, there it is. Idro Conquest 41 in black, already with a ceramic bezel. There are still some with aluminum bezels, even 1,600 euros. And then after that, you have to pay a premium. You already get the Spirit. Spirit in different sizes and colors so you fit perfectly in you can take a leap with the zulu but those of you who have limited budgets come to me i'll intervene and solve your whole life so you're fully in then if you want a chrono a zulu chrono no eh we're not there we're at 5000 5000 and more but let's say here yes you reason and you get great satisfaction even for us poor people there's something for you too yes i don't know about you Leonardo, would it be possible to see some bright super ocean models? Thanks, a big hug to Piro and that's it, super ocean, just Piro, super ocean, let's move on to super ocean, so, super ocean, super thanks, a big hug to Piro, just Piro. So, I quickly got two very special versions, super ocean, bronze case of course and with a green dial and strap, very special. Obviously, let's remember that in the Super Ocean version the caliber is supplied and not manufactured. And then next to it I got a Super OC Heritage version in 44, chronograph version, B01, which is the B1, which is the classic brightly manufactured chronograph mechanism. I got this color, I have several because I really like the silver contrast, black counters. Let's say a slightly bold panda. Let's try it on the wrist of the 44 millimeters. So all those who love small sizes. So, the truth is that the Super Ocean Heritage is made in the time only version in 42, 44 and 46 in different color variations. The chronograph is only in 44. Well, anyway, the legibility of those hands there disappears. Guys, why is this story? Well, because it's tone on tone. Tone on tone. Logically, a black color is a little bit more visible. Just create the wrist like this. Bang. There they are. After all, we put them on at 310 which are the most annoying, right? But at 310 what happens then? It says, oh no, it's 310 I don't look at the time. No. Let's change the time. Let's change it. I mean, I turn it and put the so, I'll move on. Hey, Stefano from Verona. Hi guys, we're talking about heart as a new concession. Actually, it's not Hanhart, Hanart. Hanart new concession, dot. Do you have it? Speak. Yes, we signed the contracts the other day. How does he know? I don't know who he is. What a rumor. Who's? Stuff? There's some rumor here. Did you write it? No, I said it in my telegram chat. Ah. Uh, uh. Yes. Uh, we left. We signed the contracts. We're now waiting for the goods. Unfortunately, we're in a delicate period, which is Christmas, so shipping and handling are all a bit slow, but we're getting there, we're getting there. They're beautiful. Very beautiful. A historic brand, another brand obviously specialized in pilot watches, aviation watches, has always had a strong, let's say, influence on this world. 
And anyway, these Germans, damn it, are dominating. Uh, but just Jungs, if you say Jungs, uh, the German orgy has always been there. I mean, just think about how many PC brands there are. No, 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 I like it. I like all German brands. I like them especially because they're substantial. They're substantial. Few frills, lots of content. M.H. Julius Caesar, some good psycho diver is not afraid of getting hurt. So, it's a question that I couldn't interpret well. So, if we're talking about not getting hurt because it's overbearing, the watch with the most robust, even larger case on the market by Psycho is the Sumo. Yes, of course. This is a Pepsi version, green, black, multicolor, they've made all kinds. And it's a watch that, given the current trend, has slightly smaller dimensions. It struggles a bit because obviously the latest productions have been making the cases a little thinner, a little more streamlined. There are also many references to the 60s, but on the slightly thinner cases. This is nice, because it has this shape in profile that is truly iconic. You could say iconic, right? We like this role. As you can see, many of you have also asked me, the professional with the monoblock has gone out of production. Yes, but then there are also many other watches that should be considered to avoid getting hurt. Like the Samurai. The Samurai is also quite angular. The Monster. There are a ton of them. I mean all the divers of a certain type are the bad ones. Then there are the ones for cool people. Even those with a 62 case. I consider them a bit more cool, a bit more western, right? Those ones. Right? By the way, when I had just interpreted the question, I had also bought some obviously high-end watches because... Well... If you want to get hurt in terms of price, oh, that's... Why you didn't understand the question? To get hurt, oh, to avoid getting hurt, in the sense of shooting at the... Maybe instead you mean not to get hurt. No, no, but in fact it was you. How did you understand that? I understood it. No, most likely it was obviously linked to the size, right? Size, because size matters. Yes, as he said, but if you throw that one at someone, you'll hurt them. Yes, that one would practically be the new Marine Master. You see that the case has shrunk a lot. The price of the Marine Master has remained because it's quite an expensive watch. This is the old Marine Master case, by the way, this is an old edition with high frequency mechanics inside. You see that the monoblock is much thicker, much larger in size. Here, this one here, this one here is really hurt, much more, I mean, it doesn't want to hurt itself, look here. Mamma mia, how beautiful. And unfortunately those cases no longer exist, they've been decommissioned. I don't know if they've been temporarily replaced with something new or actually replaced with the new ones. This one can even hit nails on it, yes. Yes. And then again to hurt your wallet, of course, and the LX series. This is a 5,600 euros watch. Remember that they obviously have the Grand Seo mechanism, the spring drive, and this is the world and the trade union between Seiko and Grand Seiko. These are sold, let's say they sold out. It has a line that then remained in the catalog, it was no longer developed. Well, if I may say my piece, fortunately because it is a very expensive watch and obviously the end customer also has doubts, what should I do? Should I buy the top Seiko or the entry-level Grand Seiko? Those are the doubts. Honestly, since they wanted to separate the brands, I would have, I mean, each one has to do its own work on its own peculiarities. It is a hybrid, practically. Yes, it is a hybrid and confusing. Piero, good morning everyone. Davide, could you try the Doxa 1500T on your wrist, please? Thank you very much, especially Piero who brightens our days. Yes, but did you write this to yourself? No, no. Hi Piero. Ha <laughs> ha. And that it is not me Piero but another Piero. I can't see who's sending the emails, so I think you're doing it yourself. Can't you see? Oh, here it is. Beautiful. It's heavy, it's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. So, 45, 47 lag to lag.
Yeah, yeah, as you can see, all these shapes, let's say, tortoise shell, which are the classic doxa shapes, are almost squares, they differ in diameter from lag to lag by just a few millimeters. The 300 and 300T are 42 asterisk 45, here we have 45 asterisk 47, so, you see, the 45 is really measured by the steel around the bezel, you can see that it sticks out a lot. If you just look at the bezel, the dial, you know, it resizes quite a bit, right? But you see, it's not excessively wearable either, because 47. Lag to lag isn't that big in terms of size. By the way, I personally like this watch the most because if we really want a strong diving watch, a real sports watch, this is the one that excites me the most. By the way, another special feature is that the dial is wider, so it breathes a lot. Obviously, the flaw of the Doxa is that the cases are wide, but the dials are small. In this case, everything remains quite large and visible. You also had this one in gold, right? This wasn't exactly that model, it was the chronograph that was also made in a version that was beautiful. In gold, yes, but in my opinion it was way overpriced by Ox standards. It's true that gold was the raw material, but 50 plus thousand, I mean, buy any gold watch you can find on the market, Rolex, Omega, even Blancpain, whatever you want. I mean, you can buy a Daco, I have the money, I'll take it with me. Oh, if you want it, yes, if you're a Rivato, Rivato. The problem is that it's the second one you said if I had the money. Well, I don't. Lorenzo could be seen wearing a 41.5 blue Loris Aquas on his wrist. Which version do you recommend? Between the one with saddle and the one with the in-house caliber 400. This one here with a blue dial. So, blue dial. That one there is a blue dial with a factory caliber, that is, with saddle. Well, size 41.5. That one there is a color that no longer exists. Ah. The new color is a uniform blue, bezel and dial. This was the one I liked the most because it was blue, black bezel. There was obviously this contrast between the two colors. It's a color that they used on all sizes, on all models and to me it had become somewhat representative of the brand. They decided to remove it. I have to tell the truth. I was also sorry because I sold a lot of them. Today I can't find it in the catalogs anymore. I feel like I've lost something. And then over there, always in 41.5, I took some other versions to show how Oris works with. New models, because they always release one every three models. One, we have the one there that was the watermelon. Obviously it was the Buccioni. That one is beautiful. Yes, green with a white ceramic bezel, so very special. Next to it, we have the now well-known ones that have become a family within the Oris catalog with the recycled plastic dials that are never, remember, never the same because the plastics are fused together randomly. Wait, I want to try this green one because I think it's beautiful, look. It's beautiful when summer comes, this one is really beautiful, I like it. But in my opinion, seasons on watches no longer exist, not, even, in reality, EH, not even in reality, now there are two, winter and summer. No, the famous four season wardrobes are obsolete. EH, look here, this one is 41 and 5. 41.5, yes, yes. They were all three 41 and 5, if I'm not mistaken they're all three with a factory supplied caliber. Well, I didn't take the in-house caliber because I read the question at the bottom. Well, take one or the other. So, first of all it becomes a question of pocketbook. A question of pocketbook because there is a difference of 1000 or so euros between the version with the factory supplied caliber and the in-house one. Here we are talking about 2004, 2005. 2400. 2400 against the 3536 cess which you see there is first of all the difference in price then on the one hand we obviously have the prestige of having a factory supplied mechanism well it is committed because it also comes with a 10-year warranty two of the standard ones activated by us plus eight if you register on the oris website I have all the Oris with the Soleta V200 caliber and I have no problems. 
Of course, the exclusivity that comes with having a caliber, right? Let's put it that way. As collectors, we like to have a watch with a different caliber, one like this, one like that, so to speak, you can make the effort and buy an Oris with an in-house caliber and say, I have it, I have it. Then, by the way, what's the advantage of buying a manufactured one? You spend those extra 1000 euros, whatever, but you get a 10-year warranty and 10 years of, well, the first service you have to do after 10 years, I mean, that's a lot of money, right? So you're going to spread out the extra money you spend over time. You want a model with that caliber and you buy it, otherwise the Cellite SV200s are also fine, I mean, for all budgets, for all tastes, that's fine. Then we'll see why initially, in my opinion, they decided to take a gradual step to eliminate all the supplier calibers and, obviously, having invested so much money, to only include in-house calibers. The truth is that the crisis is also putting pressure on watchmakers and obviously having a lower price point in a time of crisis, in any case, makes watches perform better. So it could be that given the market changes of the last year and a half, Oris will also decide to continue to keep the two calibers in step, that is, parallel. Davide, hello legends. A curiosity for Davide, when you are in a jewelry store at Giacomo's and you frame and frame a watch? You frame the watch, a eh? watch, a watch. You got that wrong, not the follower. Couple on your neck, me. Yes, yes. To bring it to 10 o'clock at 10.10, it seems to me that you always rotate the hands clockwise. Is that a fixation of yours? Is there a particular reason? Thank you, greetings to everyone, especially to my friend Piero. No, it's just a fixation of mine. In my little brain, I reason that when the clock is running, the gears turn in one direction, and to set the time, I always turn it in that direction. Then, oh, if it's two hours before, three hours before, I turn it upside down, it's not a problem, nothing happens, but it's just a fixation of mine, yes. Yes. No, then the mechanisms are made to turn in both directions because the gears obviously don't have jacks that only move the mechanism in one direction. There can obviously be problems if you keep going back and forth during the date reset phase. If you don't even have the date inside the clock, you can go back and forth as many times as you want, absolutely nothing happens. Then, of course, if you like to turn it more, I've seen videos where they gave it as a rule. It's not a rule, for heaven's sake. This thing has never existed. But here it is. The only problem can be moving up and down on the date change. You can create problems, but nothing happens with that either. Don't worry. A light bulb went off for me. No, this size, I mean when you have to say when you have to put the watch back an hour that there's a time change, what do you do? Do you do it all the way around 23 hours? No, you put it back. You put a time change. Back. I gave him a hard time, but how do you put it back? I put it back, did. You say that? Yes, he told you it's a fixation of his. Lorenzo, good morning. You can see a Psycho SL 0.5 and an SLA 0.65 on your wrist. Thank you. 00.65 I didn't have it right now and I'll show you what I have. Now because you put it at. Oh, I won't bother with it at 10. Now I'm going back, I'm going back. Back. I'm going back. Oh, help. For us back to the future fans, you did something stupid. Here it is. He broke the mechanism of a 3000 watch. And he broke something else, something else. Now why do you want to see them instead of me struggling, I mean he. Has an aversion to 100 at home and pays someone to put them on for him. Think about the line in A. Here it is, the wrist. How many millimeters would the caliber be? I should have worn, a 43, as. Long as the 43 is fine. Yeah. It's nice because it has these slightly cream colored indices. Cream colored with a blue gradient dial and it's a bit, a bit European in style. I'm dry here, but yeah, come on. By the way, that one is a limited edition, it comes in a box with a double strap, you know. But it's long, look here. Yeah, because they're considered to be worn over a wetsuit. Oh, it's professional, come on. Yeah, it. Reminds me of something else, but whatever. What does it remind you of? Yeah. Nice, come on, I like it. It's that it's soft here. Nice. Past, yeah. 
Listen, since we're talking about Seiko, I told you that last time we didn't show them because they arrived later, some small new products. And what are they? And they're beautiful, fantastic. Look at these little watches that the new Seiko references give you. Holy cow, they're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one that's most in demand right now. You can show it later because it's most in demand. Because of this bezel. Yeah, this bronzed bezel. Bronze. It's true, it's a shitty color. I mean it's very slightly steel colored, but just a little bit, you know, come on. Yeah, you get it, right? But even that, all this, all this, come on, let's try one instead of these. And what model is this? I don't know it. EH, it just came out, it came out. The bezel looks oval. SPB 485. EH, caliber. You know, 55, there were rolls of paper rolling in the desert. Now I would really like this one to do it at the pole, so much. But look guys, I'm going to kill myself on the sea. Oh no, it opens. No, EH, it stinks. Oh, it opened like I want to see how it closes. Ah, here it is. No, no, this is so nice. This is so much stuff. Here, EH. Yes. This one is nice. Maybe it's also going to play with the classic 62 Masca case. I like it a lot. Nice. 6R5 caliber and it's not even the usual 4 euros. Price range, 1200. 100 Shellerogini that you like. Because 1200 maybe 12,000. How about 10,000 or 12,000? What 12,000? You never know. You never say never with 1,200. There's Piero Dom and who? Yes, absolutely. Stefano, good morning everyone. I wanted to ask Giacomo, after Citizen and Alpina, if you'll ever have Stefano as a brand in the future. Good morning everyone. I wanted to ask Giacomo, after Citizen and Alpina, if you'll ever have Bulova as a brand in the future, since they're part of the same group. Thank you. You're great. So, honestly, we've had several approaches with distribution and there are some models in the catalog that I really like from Bulova. They're also very iconic and everything. Then there's a part of the catalog that leaves me a little perplexed. It's not exactly the kind of product that we like to sell to ourselves, that we like to offer to you and so, well, we always remain a bit skeptical. Also because when you acquire a brand you can't just buy what you like. You have to cover the entire catalog. I wouldn't want to end up buying products that I don't like selling or offering to you later on, and they just end up clogging up the shop windows in my accounts. Alessandro, good evening. You can see the Mido Ocean Star 39 in gray and the Zodiac Super Seawolf, reissue of the 53, with a wrist test. Thank you. Love Mido Ocean Star and Mido. And Zodiac. So, what do we have here? Here are the films. Open them, open them. What did he say? Come on. Because the postman told me. How embarrassing, I wouldn't even eat it. So, this one is a 39, this one is a 37 if I'm not mistaken. 39. No, 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 that one was the same. Both were 39. Yes, there was that 30, smaller, but it's not the one from the 53. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I also reviewed the other one, which is manual winding with a screw crown. This one is automatic. Here they are. There are two, two nice watches, as what did you say? I'll show them to you instead. I think I even reviewed both of them. I don't really like them anymore, I do everything. Nice, nice, a bit wide. So, the wrist feels like this. The Mid-Ocean Star 39. What's its advantage? It has the caliber 72, which is derived from the Lita A31. It's none other than the E92. A nice caliber that Longin also uses, which is thinner than the usual caliber 80 power modage H10, if you like. While Zodiac uses the Supro calibers, if I'm not mistaken, no, if you remember, STP, while it uses the STP calibers, the Friends of Zodiac. Yeah, yeah, here it is. It feels like this on the wrist, clearly very slightly thicker than the caliber 72, obviously.
Yeah, but they are two completely different styles. Yeah. By the way, the one you're looking at now is Zodiac's best-selling watch. Really? Yeah, yeah, ins. With the steel bezel, and the steel bezel is popular, guys. It's useless to say, you know. And I have to say the truth, the Mido at 39, the Ocean Star 39 has become Mido's best-selling watch in recent times, since it came out and replaced. The Tribute. Ah, in terms of sales. And instead, the TV hasn't. Well, let's open a parenthesis about the TV because it has become another watch that has the same sales. So, let's say that until recently the best-selling family was the Ocean Star, which was the Diver's family. Today, the multi-fort with the TV has recovered positions. It's not that the entire multi-fort is a best-seller. The TV product, which has become a family within the multi-fort, has significantly increased sales. Let's say that it is completing the Mido offer a little bit, which before mid was a little unbalanced towards the Ocean Star family. But all brands are expensive, that is, they focus on fun, that is, useless. Yes, no, then I have to tell the truth. Hamilton, if we take Hamilton, for example, the best-selling product is the khaki. Sure. And then in the various shapes, in the various types, but in any case Aki is the best-selling family, but perhaps it is the only one that stands out because if we take Rado, as far as Italy is concerned, despite having a collection of beautiful ceramics, it is dominated by Capitan Cook, Golden Horse and so on, even if Golden Wars is not a sports watch in all respects. Francesco, a curiosity for Giacomo, if he can say, which is the best-selling Hamilton watch? Thanks, goodbye, you've already said it and I'll move on. No, so there was a change, no, there was a change. Before, it was the Khaki Field Auto, which has always been the best-selling watch. Since the Marf 38 came out, the Khaki Field 38 is selling a little less, and the Marf 38 is selling a little more. Then, the fact that the Marf only came with a strap was a bit limiting. Since the bracelet came out, there's no one else with one. Antonio, hi Davide, you can see the Frederick Constant High Life World Timer in brown on your wrist. A special greeting to my friend Piero, Forza Palermo, always. Look at this, what style I have with the new buck strap. Ah. This follower of yours is a good Gustavio. Yes, look at him here. So, let's remember that the brown one in particular is a limited edition. It is obviously sold in a special package that also includes the bracelet. Ah, there is also the bracelet. Yes, they usually mount it on a bracelet and it comes with the strap. Here they do the opposite, they mount it on a strap and it comes with the bracelet. This one is nice. Anyway. Yes, but since you can't just pull it, you just pull it, you pull the piece, it opens like magic. Otherwise I wouldn't try it. I mean you always put me to the test. You put this on, you put that on and then I can't do it. I think they do it because they've figured out that you can't open them. Damn, how nice. Silence. Because it's too big for me, I can't even go around my wrist, 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 but here it is. This one has the in-house caliber, right? Yes. Let's say it's one of the cheapest world timepieces because at this point this dial is nice. We've already shown it, I don't remember. No, maybe brown, then we showed it in blue. We've also used it in blue, but this brown one, in fact, I have to say that even the second-hand FICO stun that we had was sold. The customer had an eye for it because this is truly an exceptional piece. Go ahead, go ahead. Mattia, hi. Is it possible to see the new Federico stun Moonpass coin? Thank you. E-H. Moonpass. Mo. Moonfawn Pass. So, I didn't buy it simply because it's a quartz, EH, it's a quartz that's close to 1000 euros so I didn't feel like wearing it at home. You see, they asked for it so you learn. You can, you can, you can order it, but EH, for example, with the moon phases I ordered the Manifatura because I thought it was an interesting caliber, at a considerably higher price. A bit of value in the watch too, right? Yes. Go ahead, go. Carmen. Is the new Hamilton limited edition available in store? 
Gar Hamilton Limited Edition Engineered Garments. No, it's not new, it's a limited edition that came out several months ago, it's already sold out, it's not available and if you find it at one of my colleagues, buy it because it's from the parent company. Deadline. Except Bertino, hello Davide Giacomo and the legendary Piero, Piero is great, but I said legendary. I wanted to know if the Eterna Heritage 1948 with a rice grain bracelet and cream dial is still available. No, it doesn't say, Great Pietro. It's a lie if it's self-proclaimed. But I see that when he praises himself he uses all this word. Active he was always sitting next to him over there, so he couldn't check. We couldn't. Now we've put him in the center. Check. All? All? Friends, start writing that I'm this great because now I can't anymore. He reads like a loser, but when he has to praise himself, he uses adjectives like crazy. Okay. This one here is the panna colored one with the Arabic numerals, but the rice grain bracelet is no longer there. No, unfortunately I've said several times that the Eterna offices in Italy no longer exist. They've been closed down. They've been relocated to Switzerland, they don't make new models for the Eterna brand anymore, I don't know what they plan to do. I still have one piece and a few more pieces of the silver that I could sell you. Then they'll run out. Unfortunately, I haven't had the bracelets for a long time now, you can't even buy them individually, yes. And if you want to get a great watch, at a price, remember that this is a watch that costs 190 euros. I'm selling it to you for 1,100 euros, so it's a price. The warranty is obviously still active, we intervene and, in any case, there's also customer service. Customer service is still working and if you want to, you can call us, of course. Yes, let's remember that these ones here, first of all, the rice grain bracelet they had was straight at the ends, so absurdly you can put any rice bracelet you want on it because it doesn't change anything. Naftel market. And secondly, the added value, given the fact that they have the SV300 caliber of the saddle, the thinnest one, it's not the classic SV2. The SV300 is part of the Bore version, here it is, all polished, then it's thinner than the 2824, the SV2 and it's more valuable, it's considered premium by friends. Yes, the fact that it's thinner is also evident from the case, because they then transmitted it using a thinner casing. Andrea, hi. You could compare the old 65 with the 40 millimeters and the new 39. They have reduced the case, increased the water resistance to 200 meters, but from the photos it would seem that they have also increased the width of the bezel, which in my opinion makes it lose a bit of the vintage look of the old references. Great as always, especially Piero, it says I swear red. I don't know if it's your bezel. Maybe yes, you know. Well, no, it also seems so, but in the meantime I would like to say that the vintage effect is normal and is lost with ceramic bezels. If you want to maintain those vintage style elements, in my opinion, you should use steel or aluminum bezels. Then you respect the old style, the old style. Well, Pierre, not if you know tattoos well. Absolutely, yes. Um, logically the ceramic bezel is too shiny. It loses that slightly lived in effect of the old style. So, the 41 and the one on the left and the 39 one on the right honestly don't seem smaller, much smaller than the 39 one. Yeah. Because the dial is smaller. Yeah. And so the vintage feel is almost more in this smaller one than in the larger one. Now here we have the sea steel and bronze one which is really nice. Yeah, that one is really nice. Yeah, 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 but I don't know if it hasn't lost its shape, right? Because even though we take it for granted that it is wider and it should be measured because now it is also different here, there is the insert, we take it for granted that it is a tenth wider, right? But the vintage effect is still there, I mean it doesn't change anything. In my opinion, the chromatic aspect is more influential than the size of the bezel or the dial. Yeah, sure.
If someone wants a total vintage look, they should have a watch with an aluminum bezel. Soon, they won't make aluminum bezels anymore. Right? Because the technology is obsolete. They are obviously subject to wear and tear, even easily. Maybe that was also their charm. Over time, they would fade, they would lose a bit of their color, of course. And we mainly remember them on Rolexes that took on that faded appearance. Maybe it also looked a bit worn. I've also seen some of their red longines, which are really popular, but also recent ones, huh? Yes, but do you like this thing or not? I ask you as an outsider, as a Sino, if my watch is getting old, that I like, the thing. Ages a bit along with it. Yes, yes, I like it. It ages more, it ages more. <clears throat> Simone, with the new release of the Loris Diver, will the old references 65 go out of production or will they remain as references alongside the new ones? Period. I don't know, I don't know because we've already seen that over time the 42s have been completely eliminated. Because they didn't sell, but in my opinion. No, at the beginning, they did sell. By the way, I'll tell you, there were some early versions that had very particular dials. I really liked them, but then they tended to shrink, given the fact that it was a vintage watch. So it reminded me of watches from the past where the dimensions were a bit smaller. The 40s were more in line. Well, it could be that with the advent of the 39, if the market responds well, they'll start to purge some of them. Maybe they'll start with some colors until they'll completely discontinue the lines. Fran, no, excuse me, Guido from Maserata, hello guys, is there anything we know about the Calamai GMT, when will it be available in stores? Let us see it. It's here. Here we go, I'll get to you now. Now we're delivering them all to you. We have it. Francesco gave birth. It's beautiful. Okay, here I have to say that something has changed compared to the version I tried. Something has changed. Here I see a ceramic bezel. Yes, a ceramic bezel. This step has been taken. We just talked about it regarding Oris and also about Calamai, which is a slightly newer, fresher brand and obviously we are looking to the future, to new technologies. Ceramic, but the graphics have also changed. Now there are 24 hours, I don't remember if they were there before. No, there were not a total of 24 hours, there were alternating hours and they were much smaller because there were small colored inserts on the bezel. Well, the disc with the numbers was actually very, very thin, it was even difficult to read. The legibility and visibility have definitely improved considerably. The unit is fixed, as my friend Francesco always said, closed case back, SV330 caliber. But I would also keep quiet, I wouldn't talk about it too much because, well. What are you? Taking home with you? No. No. Yes. It's beautiful. Here it is, it's arrived. It's. Beautiful, very beautiful. In fact, I won't even try it on, so you'll have to wait. Wait. So, where are we? Franco Allegro. Menestrello, a big hello to the boss. I know this isn't the right time. But I'd like to know if any interesting used watches have come back. Yes, we'll see them later. Ah, okay. Let's see, let's take a look later. Let's get some. Alessandro, bye. Some GMT divers around 2,000 euros. Thanks, bye. Are there any? Yes, there are a lot of them. I have to tell you the truth. I had a hard time. Ah. I had a hard time. Hey guys, that's how it is. So, because the GMT is an expensive watch, EH, Calamai 2,400 euros list price. Then okay, we'll step in. In any case, we're in the upper price range. Instead, this Mido Mido Tribute GMT immediately came to mind. We had already seen it in the Shark version in blue. And this is the Italian edition in green. Brand new, just arrived. Last time I even forgot to show you the dial. It's black, it's black, black, yes. Black dial and green bezel. Yes, there are also versions in the catalog in the 44 size that are under 2,000 euros and in the Pepsi color version, of course, in the all blue, all black color, the caliber derived from the 2,893 Delas, in short, those classic Mido watches that have always been very successful. Then you can find my full review on the channel of the blue one.
but not of this green one that is new. The Italian version says, uh, Italian version. So they chose green for the flag. Yeah, they chose green for the flag, yeah. No, because by now the Italian editions have always been green or almost all green. It must be because of the flag. There was a blue one, am I wrong? Yeah, the first one, maybe. And then I got this one, since it's a new brand, Alpina. But even with this one we're slightly over the 2000 euros that they gave us as a ceiling. Well. We showed you this one earlier, the Armin Nicoletta, that was also a GMT, which, if you wanted, would have fit in. This one is under 2000 euros. Well under 2000 euros. This one is beautiful, it. Also has its own personality, it's unique, it's beautiful with this one. This insert was black with the numbers, maybe the insert is a bit difficult to read, but it gains a lot in terms of personality and originality. It's beautiful. Also, look at the dial, how it's degradé. It's not degradé, it's worked. No. Ah, it's worked. It's three-dimensional. I like it when you say degradé. Degradé. And then, <laughs> since we're talking about GMTs, I wanted to include this product. It has nothing to do with the question our friend at home asked us, but I want to start crying over this watch. Ah. Because it's a really nice watch. It could have been the GMT of the year, but it has one flaw that Piro will surely like, but not you. It's a quartz watch. Which is a quartz because it's a flaw because if this watch had been an automatic with the Tissot prices we're used to, this could have really been the watch of the year. It's true. Because aesthetically it's really, really nice. It comes in different colors. This is the green one. It's a watch that I really like aesthetically. Yeah, this is a very low price range because it's a quartz watch. If it had been an automatic priced at 1000 euros or more, this really needed a better price. See, I saw the price. How much is it? Well, this is the price of a quartz watch, obviously. 525, nice, come on, big quartz, then Piro. And then, at this point I wanted to ask a question. Ah, but we still have a question. Though, yeah, okay, no, question. No, since we're on the subject of GMT, we talked about World Time earlier, but GMT World Time because in the end they're two very similar products, right? If you like. Ah. World Time. What does it indicate to me? The various time zones around the world because I have to have them all in front of me at once. No. Yes. GMT I set one to the one I need and I have that. Yes, but there's nothing to stop you from taking the second you need as a reference for world time. But it's much more complicated to read. At a glance, huh. Okay. But why this question? No, because. They overlap in terms of function, in terms of complication. Yes, yes, they overlap. For example, we had the overpull which is included, which doesn't have an excessive price range, and it even has a truly exceptional size. Well, since questions often come up about GMT, but when you ask me about GMT, even though they are completely different, you might also be interested in world time. That's my question. Ah, oh, now I get it, yes. And then, ironically, there are certain watches that have both world time and Gemetti, you see? And the Midali, what was it? Yes, there was the decompression, which was like this. It had the dual function plus the decompression scale, a real mess. Ah. Yes. In my opinion, it's those exaggerations that really make the watch difficult to read. Nice to look at, but hard to read. Nice too. Here it is, a 37mm rad overpool that you don't know whether to go diving, or a trip around the world, or whatever it is that people do these days. Bye. So, excuse me, hello everyone, is it possible to see the Alpina Geneva Heritage? The one with the Diora, we haven't seen it yet. Greetings from Genoa, Piero Top. Come on Genoa too, because Palermo and Genoa are. But I don't have it. Honestly I bought this one. I didn't consider the other one because in my opinion it stood out a bit from the current offerings on the market. Two tone dial like this, by the way, sector dial, typical of those years. The other one seems a bit more obvious to me and I'll tell you the truth, if I had to buy the other one I'd rather buy the Ina. 
qualitatively a superior watch. Well, if you want you can order it, it's not a problem. I like this one better. Sure, the Arabic numerals are easier to read overall, but... I don't know if you've reviewed it. No, this one is perfectly legible even like this. You didn't review it for this. There you go. Do something useful in life and keep it under it like this. Like I. Keep it under it. This is a 38 millimeters. No, huh, come on. You didn't review this one? I thought so. No, it's beautiful, it's elegant, it's nice. Pay attention, I. Can go with me. Here. I'll stop begging. What the hell does that mean, wrong? No, no. Ah, hello everyone, a big hug to the legendary Piro. I could see on the wrist that 34 millimeters, maybe a login conquers compared to 38. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, to all of you. Bye. So, 38 right away, here it is. And as for the smaller version, I have a variation that is new and is being advertised at the moment, which was obviously the inclusion of the rubber strap. I like it a lot. Obviously it might be a slightly more feminine version because in the sizes that are too small, as we said before, Cassadre plays a bit ambiguously on men and women. So, the 38mm is perfect like this. There's nothing to say about this one. I mean, what? 38mm this type of watch. Look here. Perfect. And that one over there is 34. Monica would like it here, in my opinion. This purple isn't purple here. Light blue purple, light blue. This light blue here, it looks nicer. Lilac, almost lilac. Lilac. It's true. Lilac. I like lilac. Oh no, I have to go hold it with my hands. Oh, I'll hold it for you. 34. Oh, it's... Nice. Yeah, 34 doesn't look bad, but it... has a slightly more gig-like effect. This one's also nice. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know, I take the 38, guys, I'm sorry though, but I have it, I've had it for 19, as Rocco said. So it's fair that. Rocco is 19. A friend who has a 171 wrist, maybe. And then there you go, just like that, because earlier we talked about Mido, from TV, which is a high selling family. Something new, let's show it so we can throw it out there, huh, which is obviously a. Big date too. Reinforce a product that is very popular at the moment. It's a limited edition with a typical Mido color, namely black and orange, which are the iconic colors of the brand. Ha! Huh. The all-black big date, all-black PVD. Very aggressive as a product and if you want, the multi-TV is also quite an elegant watch in this colorway. It becomes a little more aggressive. It's also nice in black, ha, huh, but yes, aggressive. Dot. Many people keep asking me for the version with the test pattern, which is clearly now. Ciao. It was a hit there with the test pattern, it was a hit from. Ma and by the way I wouldn't have bet on it because it was a lot. But instead good, good, yes, yes, good, I don't know, I bet either. Okay guys, we here say that while Piro does the DIY, why not? Ha, huh, I wanted to try to wear, let's show you. Some used ones, how do you put it on? Ah, yes, let's go and see some used ones. Okay, shall we go and see them or shall I bring them to you? Bring them to us, bring them to us, dot, enough, how much is it, 15, 20, this one here, here it is, we're back on the line, while Piero is trying on the watches, what are you trying on, a zenith, is it the first one, okay, this one here is the first used one, yes, it's beautiful, no, you're the only one holding it, as he said and then what do I know, here, wait, I don't know how to open it, here, here it is, guys, this one here is, mamma mia, how nice that I'm putting mine back on, dot, sorry, but this one here is a 42, 42, yes. Chronomaster Sport by Al Bianco, ceramic bezel. The best-selling watch from Zenit. Beautiful. The most sought after too. Oh, when it first came out, people would fight over it. Here it is. How much is this one? No, you can't say how much it's for sale. No, I prefer that they call me. At least we can go through all the details of the classic chronograph with the caliber and the first one inside available here. Of course you can pick it up, but my goodness, how nice. Ha. Huh. 42, 42, I think it's nice. Ha, huh, this one looks good on you. Take it.
Pay for it and take it home. Yeah, pay like this. What the hell does it open? Huh, do you see it? We have, by the way, always a Rolex Batman. We optioned it for a customer, but then it's possible that if the customer doesn't finalize it and comes back. Oh. Oh. What nice watches we have today. Huh? The Omega Speedmaster. Bradero. Manual winding. But isn't this from 1957? Sure, give me that one. I have to try it on my wrist. But is it only with the strap? Yes, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes. Bracelet. Perfect. Clearly original strap. Guys, unfortunately we pick up what you have at home. It's not like we can. I know friends who will pick up if you want. So, just to explain how trade-in works, which is a very difficult world. So, in trade-ins I give you a brand new car with a warranty from the date of purchase and I have to take your used car. Often your used car is also an artichoke and I obviously have to send it to where it needs to be housed. It has to be serviced where the necessary time has passed, or if there are obviously small things that need to be fixed, like the gear where there are scratches. If they are too obvious they need to be raised, so we also have to intervene aesthetically. Well, I have to issue a one-year warranty. Unfortunately, by law I have to earn little, but something from it, because otherwise the state will tell me, what are you doing, Jorioldi? Ah. Unfortunately that's how it is, these are Italian laws and so it's useless for you to go to Chrono24, look at the value of your used watches, then come to me and ask me the price I would give you for a new watch and go and reduce the prices of Chrono24 which are usually increased by 30 to 40 percent depending on what you look at. So, if you obviously want to do a trade-in, I can also take the Chrono24 valuations for yours. But the starting point for subtracting the value of yours is the list price. You can't expect to take the highest market valuations of your artichokes and then come and ask me for a discount on the new one. It doesn't work like that, because otherwise you take the minimum market valuations which are not those of Chrono24, because remember that Chrono24 is mainly, the watches are sold by dealers, so they all have a warranty, they have all already been fixed, they have all been serviced with a Chrono24 warranty and the dealer who sells it to you, because you have all the protections in the world. The dealer spends a lot of money that he has to give as commission to Chrono24. He also has to make a profit, because if you do used watches and you do it for a living you have to make a profit on it. And then if you have to change the straps, the original straps cost a lot of money, while changing a leather strap from an Omega, a Tagar, or whoever it is, is 3 to 400 in leather pieces. Those also have to be considered. Whoever buys a new watch doesn't want the nice sweaty strap on your wrist, they want a strap made of metal, and they have every reason to do so. So don't just do random calculations like that. We are professionals, we have to follow rules. You are private individuals and obviously if not. They will sell it. Well done, I was about to say, you sell it yourself with all the associated risks, maybe you get those extra 200 euros. If the watch stops, it's the problem of the person who bought it, because in private negotiations it is seen and liked. Do you like it? You buy it. It's your business, it's business, we give you a warranty, the warranty is a value. Then what do we have? The tutor. Ah. Uh. This one. Two, and that one too. Yes, that one came in, they had already seen it. This one too. This one here is the Tudor Black Bay with an in-house caliber. Look at this, how beautiful it is. Tudor Black Bay, how long has this one been around? No one knows. Well, Tudor doesn't even have a micro micro, nothing. It doesn't look like it. Well, I like the size, I like the legibility, it's a nice product. I honestly prefer these versions of Tudor to all the Black Bays. Aside from the fact that this is also a Black Bay because it is part of the Black Bay family. But let's say the classic Black Bay diver with the bezels. Yeah, I don't remember how many millimeters this one is. Maybe, but. They make different versions.
They make a 39, a 41. In my opinion, this is the ideal size. Obviously, always taking into account the wrist of the person who will wear it. Wait, I don't know how much it is in diameter because I can't tell from 39 to 41 by eye, but... <laughs> Even talking about Tudor, as we said before with Omega, I'll get a lot of them to sell in. Then there was the gentleman guy. Here it is, look, how beautiful it is. The Tissot gentleman here with a 40mm diameter case, Power Modic Caliber 80. This one is also available to my friend Giacomo for anyone who wants it. Hey guys, let's say we're done here. We saw four nice watches, also used, at the end. At Genet, I vote for Zenit. And I vote for Omega, but also for Tudor. Come on, they're all nice. I don't know. Guys, I think I've said it all, huh? I thank my friend Giacomo for having us. I thank my friend Giacomo for having us. And then I also thank my friend Giacomo for having us and I remind you of the physical appointments, as always, whenever I want, as often as possible here on YouTube. Lovegers, thanks for.